Now let's look at init state. What exactly is it? What's its use? So here we can see it is there to read the configuration file and to initialize the applications. If we just go inside it, there is a try catch block that we can see which can be found from the activities. So there is the one try catch. So in that there is a try block and we have a catch block and finally in try we can find few of the pre-built XAMLs available in this particular sequence that we have. And then there is a catch section where we have in case there is any error that has occurred. We are trying to capture it and then decide upon the state which we have to take. So there are two possible transitions available. So what is a transition? Transition is this two particular flows that we have defined here. One is system exception, one is success. If there is no exception that has occurred, it will be directed towards get transaction data, which is a success for us. And if there is any exception that has occurred, then the system exception is not nothing. So in that case, we will take it to end process and we will end the process then and there. See, system error, this is success. So let's dissect this particular in, in its state further. So here we have a system error variable that we can see over here. The type is exception. Okay, so it is defined in the main file. Then as we go, we are trying to read the configuration file that we have discussed about earlier. So where we are trying to have our URLs, any other location, drive uh, paths we have, or anything that we have, okay, that is dynamic and we want it to be changed every time. So once that is done, and see, here we have a condition where this particular config will be read only the first time at the start of the RE framework or at the start of the process, once, whenever the bot is first triggered. It is done only once per process okay so first time as config file what is config config is nothing but a dictionary that we have defined here you can see it's a dictionary which have key and value here key is string and the value is object type okay so basically that is used That is used to save whatever values we have defined in the config file. So once that is done, what happens is here we have the init settings which is responsible in reading the config file. I'll try to open that for you. So here is how it looks like. There's a config variable that we have defined. Sorry, it's out config. So we have an argument over here. It's of type dictionary and that has got two arguments to it. So once that is defined, we are trying to read the config file with each sheet in it. If I just go back and look at the different arguments that we are passing, we are trying to give it the path of config file which is available in this particular framework and we are giving it the possible sheets that is settings and constants I'll just try to show you the config file once again here's the config file and we have settings constants and assets in settings name and value so this is what we are trying to read. So here we are just passing one sheet by another and we are reading it and then we are saving those particular key and value pairs into whatever dictionary that we have created right here which will be sending out 
which can be used for further process. So once that is done, we are trying to fetch the assets. This particular sheet over here will help us in retrieving the assets from the orchestrator. So this particular sequence is for that, to get the assets from the orchestrator. Once that is done, so by now we assume that we have the configuration file with us and we are good to go. So this is a particular XAML that comes along with the framework which is used to kill any application that is already open because RPS suggests that you have a clean environment okay, where you have none of the applications that you are already using in the process being opened. Okay, here we are going to use kill process activities that will help us to kill any process that is already launched. So it can be web applications, it can be Excel applications or it can be Windows applications. Anything you have to just pass the process name and we'll close it. So once that is done, we are here with our init all applications XAML. This is XAML where we, are tr we will try to open any application which is required for us to start the process. There will be nothing right now. So as we can see, we have to write the code for that and drag some required activities so that we can launch the application and and keep the environment set so that we can go further and get the transactions and then process them. This is all about the init state.